We've all been there. We've just installed Home Assistant, and now we found a really cool integration we want to add. But as we read through the documentation, we realize we need to add something to our configuration.yaml file. How the heck do we get to our configuration.yaml file? So in this video, we're going to talk about ways to access your YAML files. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. What's up everyone? My name is Jeff and this is Slacker Labs, where we look for ways to automate the boring stuff using Home Assistant and Smart Home Tech. This week, we're talking about something that gives lots of people heartburn, the YAML configuration files. More specifically, how the heck do you access them? While we have more configuration options via the UI these days, there are times that we're going to have to get under the hood and edit the configuration files. And for people just starting out with Home Assistant, accessing those files isn't really crystal clear. In fact, there's no way to access them out of the box via the UI. So in this video, we're going to talk about two methods for accessing those files if you're running Home Assistant that has access to the add-on store. The first option is called File Editor. If you're running a supervised version of Home Assistant and you're not planning on editing your YAML files unless you absolutely need to, then this is the method I would recommend. It's easy to set up and you can edit your configuration files right in the browser. Let me show you. To set up the file editor add-on, we're going to head over to Supervisor and then the add-on store. Search for file editor. Click on it and then click install. If you're going to just use this add-on for basic file editing, then you don't really need to do anything else but start it. If you're curious about what else this add-on can do, like syncing a Git repo, then check out the documentation. Since today we're just focused on accessing our YAML files, we can go ahead and hit start. You'll also want to turn on the show in sidebar so that you can get a nice link to your files in the menu on the left. To edit your files, just click the file editor option in the menu on the left. Then, if you click this folder in the upper left of the file editor window, you can select your file to edit. From here though, we can just start editing our configuration.yaml file. When you've made your changes, hit your normal hotkey for saving your files. Command S on the Mac and I think Control S on Windows. I apologize if I just butchered that Windows users. Windows 2000 was the last Windows OS I spent any time with. Or once you've finished your edit, a floppy disk icon appears on the top row and you can just click that if you're more comfortable playing with the mouse. And that's it, super easy. The next option we have is called Samba, which if you have little to no Linux experience, you may have never heard of Samba before. But Samba is a piece of software that allows non-Windows PCs to talk to Windows PCs. And it can provide you direct access to your Home Assistant configuration files over the network. If you're someone who's in that YAML until I die group, and you're running a version of Home Assistant with access to the add-on store, then this might be the option for you. This option requires a little more effort on your part in terms of setup, and it is BYOE or bring your own editor. But this option does make it easy to back up your configuration manually. And if you want to add large groups of files to your configuration, like say media files, you can just do so over the network using drag and drop. Anyway, let's walk through the setup. To set up Samba, we're going to head over to Supervisor and then click the add-on store. This time, we're going to search for Samba. When you find Samba Share, click on it and then click Install. Like I said, Samba is a program that will allow the device Home Assistant is running on to be accessible over the network. Once this finishes installing, we will have to do a bit of configuration. So head over to the Configuration tab. Here you'll want to create some credentials for accessing the Samba Share. Username is set to Home Assistant by default but I suggest you change it to something unique to you. Same goes for password, and make this a strong password, not like this one. You'll also want to set your allowed hosts here. If you can, lock it to your specific host that you'll be connecting from. But if you're not wanting to do that, you can just set it to your local network. Then 
flip back to the info screen and click start. Once it has started, you can head over to the network on your PC. On a Mac, I just use Finder and I go up to the Go menu and then select Connect to Server. Device is Samba colon slash slash and then the IP of my Home Assistant host. When I click Connect, I get prompted for the credentials I set up in the Samba configuration. I enter those and then hit Enter. And there we are. Access to the configuration files. From here, I can just drag them into my favorite editing app and go to town making changes. Just be sure to save before you close the app. And that's it. Either one of these methods will work well anytime you need to access your configuration files. However, before we finish up, let's take a moment to talk security. Because if you don't use a secure password in your Samba configuration, you might see a notification like this in your notification panel. Now, this doesn't mean that your system has been compromised. This just means that that super secret password you used in your Samba configuration isn't all that secret. In fact, that exact password was used by someone else and was discovered in a data breach. Home Assistant is trying to help make your setup more secure by taking passwords that you've used in your configuration, anonymizing them, and sending them to a service to check to see if they've been exposed on the internet. This notification just means that the password you used has been exposed on the web. So consider it trash and pick a more secure password. And just so you know that the threat is potentially real, Shodan has a list of IPs of systems that are running Home Assistant. So if you think that your system is hidden, it may not be. So use strong passwords. And that's it for this video. If you're looking for ways to use your newfound superpowers of editing YAML files, check out some of my other videos on Home Assistant. If you found this video useful, hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more Home Assistant and home automation content like this. Lastly, Thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.